suppression of the use of marijuana and of the forces lurking behind it are the most important jobs this department is now engaged in. In 1930, the records on marijuana in the Washington office of the Narcotics Division scarcely filled a small folder like this. Today, they fill cabinets. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Coloradians, and everyone that's smart enough to listen from the outside. It's one of the most amazing plants we've ever discovered. The pot party, the trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a cup. Please! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another week of Stone the Petite with your host. As always, it's me, Kip, and to my right, I got old CB. CB, how are you? That must be nice. I uh, worked my tail into the dirt. I am so gosh darn sore. We're going to try to keep the cursing at a minimum here on the front end. So if you are driving your kids to school or home from school, maybe you're making the grocery run this afternoon. I'll try to keep it as PC as possible. That'll last about three minutes. So we'll see how it goes. But without Eve here to help us edit, that's right. She spent her own little vacation and we'll dive into a little bit of an Eve segment, but we've got a great episode for y'all today. We've got another segment of Is It Good or Just New featuring a Colfax restaurant. I know you went viciously after Barcelona's sister restaurant last week, so I'll bring one to the table this week and we'll see how it goes. We, In addition to that, we'll recap some of the best bites from last Last week, I'm finally feeling back like myself or a little bit more so. So maybe we'll do an ode to Jerry, the goodest, greatest boy that ever did live. We miss him dearly. Um, as well as we'll talk about the homeless stalker that followed me and my buddy Stephen Wolf around Rhino, who... Uh, just threw shit at us for a solid 30 minutes and we couldn't figure it out. We'll talk details in that. And there was a little pop-up party last week too, Chris. We need to dive into the nitty-gritty around the, the great food that's going down this summer in Denver. But before we do that, I want to give a shout-out to our sponsors. We've got two of them, and if y'all don't know them by now, then you're doing yourself a disservice. We're in the final weeks of the LTO Triple Threat Sandwich over at Bird Call Chicken. If you don't know, now you know. With locations strewn across Colorado, three locations in Arizona, three locations in Texas, they partner up with a chef every single month to highlight and raise money for a fundraiser that's near and dear to the chef's heart. This month's specialty sandwich has been the Triple Threat with a pepper jack cheese, habanero aioli, and a spicy bird God damn, it's delicious. Perfect thing to make you sweat out all the sin after a long weekend. Cannot recommend it enough. If the, the spice level is a little too much for you, fret not. They've got all sorts of different combinations and offerings, whether it's chicken nuggets and tendies for the kiddos, or maybe you're just looking for a sandwich where you can build it your own way. If you want the Parmesan crisp, the Korean kimchi, maybe you just want to do a little barbecue sauce or the bird barbecue sauce on top no matter the operation no matter what you like on your sandwich they have all the fixings for you so swing through check out their website easy to order you don't have to deal with a human you can get blitzkrieg go in there grab your food from a stall and get back home and enjoy your munchies from the confines of your couch speaking of the confines of your couch Rest easy this year, knowing our friends from Seed Money Consulting are there to help. They are the champions of small business. If you want to get back to living your life and running your business the way you know how, bring in the professionals. Let somebody help you handle the books. Rather than just worrying about tax season and making sure you don't get audited, don't forget the IRS audits more small to medium-sized businesses than any other industry or demographic available it's because they know that you are the most susceptible that's why it's great when you can partner with folks like our friends at seed money consulting no matter if you work in the hospitality the cannabis maybe you're a 1099 maybe you're a small business owner that just wants to focus on making the food get out of the truck or out the window of the restaurant if you may fall into any of these categories then seed money consulting is there for you they have a cfo in a box option which works 
perfectly no matter your budget. It's friendly price because they understand what everybody is going through, especially in the year 2024. We keep thinking a recession is around the corner, but at worst, we want to make sure that you can sleep easy knowing you've got great financial advice and folks looking after your book. So reach out to our friends at Seed Money Consulting. Tell them we sent you, and nothing positive will happen just because of that, but they'll be glad to know that we're doing our part, and that's really what matters most. Exactly. All right, Chris, let's dive into it. It's been a couple of days since we all got together. Should we start with Best Bites from Brixton now that we're done glazing them on the set? We can talk a little bit about it. I mean, I know Eve had fun, and I think she's really coming out of her shell when it comes to dining out with us. Yeah, she's starting to take risks, and I love it. There was like, I feel like when we first, when we first got started and introduced her, just a different thing. She was a little timid, but now with the backing and support of us, um, she's going after new things. Yeah, and I feel like she's not only going after new things like caviar bumps when otherwise may not be her cup of tea, but there's also. We're putting her on great spots, like even you know a nonchalant burger, like at Brixton, easily a top ten burger in this fucking city. It goes right next to a net, and those unsuspecting burgers from a little bit nicer of a location, but bringing the hammer. And we're getting to show Eve some of our favorite spots around town. First Sapsua, now Brixton. I thought we had a that was a wonderful representation of that restaurant when we had Denise on the pod last week. And they come in that little, that oil that sits at the bottom. It's delightful. They really do have a a nice array of just like stoner friendly snacks, like munchies. Like you don't have to go in there and order a fucking steak and frites, you know, like you can keep it as casual as you want or you can drum it up very nicely. That's the fluidity of that restaurant and how hairy and I mean, shit, fucking Chef Nick when he's, you know, he wasn't there last week, but they have fun with the menu and make it approachable. Don't forget about the the little Happy Meal sauce on there as well. I mean, it's a delicate dance making sure that it doesn't get too sogified where you can still keep the integrity of the burger alive when you're eating it. And I feel like they do that beautifully. We've really stepped it up. It's not just, you know, like, oh, we'll just get the cheapest thing from Cisco anymore. Like, having those little accoutrements that really kind of, like, play well with multiple dishes on your menu. I mean, go the way of the French. Fucking fry those puppies and serve them with goddamn everything. You're not going to find someone that's ever disappointed that, like, oh, we got a whole basket of fries. And it just... We dunked it in mussels. We dunked it in ketchup. We dunked it in French onion soup. No one's ever going to be mad. Just have a better French fry on every menu, and your restaurant's going to get at least a point to jump to at least the dickheads that use Yelp. I mean, what a stupid fucking concept that is. But at the same time, it resonates with everybody. A quality fry, and it's just like something you just add on to everything else you order. It's awesome. Oh, yeah.
they always hit. And, I mean, the, the Oyster Wolf is there on Wednesdays, so that's always the, kind of a fun little surprise um, where you can just kind of walk in, grab yourself a glass of the Pet Nat, or like you mentioned, one of the new springtime menu items. I personally fuck with the Old Bay Martine. Um, and then that with six oysters, it's just a casual little... You can do that with a glizzy or, you know, or like you said, a nightcap. It's it's a nice little neighborhood dive, and I'm glad that we can kind of circle, make them make sure they're in our rotation, you know. Uh, what about the rest of the weekend? Did you do anything cool since then? Oh, fuck yes. <laughs> I didn't even know they had anything besides the taco serrano. I mean, yeah. It's just real. Every now and then I'll get them and I don't have the patience. It's like when you come too quick during sex, I have to get one while I'm driving and then I drip it all over myself and I'm like, oh, oh, oh. And then I realized I messed my pants. That's how good those things are. Like, there is no way. Like, there's no bad time to eat them or temperature. But by God, when you can get them with all those flavors coming right off the grill where the onions are still sweating. And then get old Dunkaroo and some of that brutally hot orange sauce. (laughs) I'm glad you got to showcase that to, like... We're just trying to let folks know about good food, like, that we truly continue to dine on. And so I'm glad you're everyone's getting a taste of it. Oh, I was like, sweet, man. <laughs> Didn't think we'd get to that this quick. So does an ice-cold Modelo. Sometimes you got to be, you know. It's middle of the day. It's 11 a.m., Kip. Why are you drinking seltzers? I get it. I think that's actually a really quality PSA to have just, you know, obviously kind of randomly in there, but we know the friend that you're speaking about. And yeah, I think just checking on your crew, um, there was obviously this doesn't personally relate to us, but a professional golfer passed away this weekend when he took his own life. And this is a gentleman that's won millions of dollars, um, but had been battling sobriety himself. And literally somebody on the course was like, hey, we need someone to check on him. And unfortunately, you know, it was a permanent solution to what some consider like a temporary problem or something of that nature. And I think that we would just be remiss if we weren't like check on your friends um and i think that's a great psa and i'm glad to hear you took we won't use names but our friend out to lunch and just reminded them hey we're here for you we care for you we want to see you come bounce back stronger so i love that chris thanks i'm glad you did and it's not just this month it should be you know always check on your boys check on the ladies and your friends you know in your life you know things don't have to be going bad like outwardly for someone to be struggling on the inside and so you know everybody has their own battle you know try not to criticize too bad before walking in their shoes unless they're an instagram influencer in which case openly berate them they they don't count dude fuck Nice. A little pit a party? Yes. 
she can wail. She can wail. I, I love her. Uh huh. Was it all GA or was it like? then they're not scared to oversell those where people are like hanging under the trees and sitting behind the lemonade like can you know well i mean it's it's gotten out of control and obviously the taylor swifty crowd has gone after live nation and axs and aeg and they are one of the reasons that has brought this not only price gouging but just this preposterous monopoly to its knees but for those that have been traveling tr- you know, or been following traveling drug bans f- for years like we have i mean 15 years 20 years now of seeing widespread and bullshit like that like it's just preposterous it's gotten out of control the cost of tickets are so much and then they don't give a fuck about your actual experience in the show including the people at red rocks like this time last year when people were getting hailed on and they were like no no don't don't postpone the show don't cancel the show let's wait and see if it passes because then they're in refund zone and instead people are fucking taking like lumps the size of golf balls in terms of hail like we have gone we 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 stray further from god's light at every concert i attend I remember, I remember. Yeah, and it's just, it's just awful what it's got to. And personally, I think every show a Red Rock should be general admission. Like Maybe be- the first 10 rows are the ones that are reserved for yeah. things of that nature. And then you have the private area in the back. So, like, you know, for the people that are super important. I've I've been there recently. It's not a big deal. But you're exactly right. Like, with that place, I did John Mayer a few years ago, back when Hickenlooper was still governor. And it was like people staying standing in your reserve seat. I don't want to be the dickhead that's like, hey, we're seat 34 and 35. <laughs> and it's like, I don't want to be that guy. I shouldn't have to police my own seats more than once. But there is no, like concept of like ownership in these seats so putting it all on us is like passing the buck of laziness while they're milking an extra 35 dollars for reserve seating i don't know yeah i can't live nation owns Ticketmaster. i can't remember
Yeah, these artists are now owned by Live Nation. And, like, we used to work for Live Nation. They were a sponsor of this pod. And thank God we broke those chains of our owner and, you know, really set out on our own. But realistically, they've kind of got them by the balls in terms of how many shows they have to do in a year to make their nut and all of those other situations. It's just gotten fickle, and it's become – it's everything's just – too expensive these days, Chris. Everything, everything. Yeah. I saw her once, shout out to Kayla from uh, A Thousand Things to Do in Denver. She took me one time to go see Maggie Rogers, and I was like, whoa, and I'm hooked for life now. Like, love her. Every autumn, she's like, leads out the gates next to my Mumford and Sons and everything. Like, with a, a sweater weather, it's like throwing the MR. You know, don't be shy. So, I mean, I'm glad you caught that. That's a good one to start, break the seal for the season. I obviously did the Wiz Khalifa, which was an interesting dynamic for my first, like, break the seal for Red Rocks of the year. But I've got panic in the middle of summer, and that's going to be a fucking doozy. So, yeah, you just have to save and sell a kidney if you want to go to the concert with them opening for the Stones in June. So that one's actually at the football stadium. Anyways, I digress. Let me tell you about my weekend. I've been worked like a dog. Um... Morgan's family came up from Arizona for a little vacation and that turned into a long vacation because we have put them to work as well and helping us redo the backyard. We planted a tree, the Jerry tree for our, our dog, um, laid sod, built raised beds, all of the things. And it's just been a bear. And I was so sore, Chris, after like digging a fucking trench to put down pavers and moving 600 cinder blocks that, you know what I did to relieve some of that I- headache? I I drove over to the Home Depot that's off Wadsworth, and I hired two gentlemen to come work for us for four hours in the morning and help us lay sod. I want to give a shout-out to Jan and Raul. Um, I doubt they're listening to this pod. By God, they saved my skin this weekend. I was, like, sunburned. I was exhausted. As you know, I work out all the time. So I was perfectly primed to do this laborious work. If anybody, it's me. Um, I, my body hurts. Like I could crumple like that oceanic fucking Titanic tour. Like uh, my body aches so bad right now. And it would have been 90,000 times worse if I didn't have Jan and Raul. I think, I think, like, what would it do? You think you're like, oh, okay, like, I mean, it's a lot of work. Plant some shrubs, to this and that. <laughs> The bags of sand weigh 75 pounds, and you just have to move them around the yard, and it's arduous. And so thank the Lord that we have now come to the home stretch just in time for Drink Red, Wear Red this Thursday. I'm done. Like, I'm wearing pure white linens. I have zero interest in getting any more dirt under these fingernails until I fall face first at Red Rocks later this summer. It looks great, though. I've got to do it. Thanks. That's all Mo. I had zero planning. Yeah, hey, cunt, you don't realize the rules. Chris walks into our backyard. He's like, man, this looks great, and just, like, starts stomping around like Cotton Eye Joe is playing in the background. Morgan runs out, Chris, get the fuck off the yard. Submit, yeah. You might as well just pull a Michael Scott and bury your face in it with a straw, but all the same. That was the uh, the low light of my weekend. The highlight was I got to do two badass dining experiences last week. Um, I mentioned that the Wilsons have been in town for a, a while now, so I had to go to work, and I needed to be able to master date in public. You know, just go decompress, sit in the corner. I had had a hellacious week between Jerry and Chef Amos's memorial. I just didn't want to be around people. So this week's segment, Is It Good or Just New, 
is showcasing a newish restaurant from restaurateurs that have had their hands dirty in our community for a while. I went to Yang Ya, which is, if you read it phonetically, Don Da, right next to Bon and Butter out in on Colfax in Aurora. Chris, it's not just new. Well, that's just because Eve's not here to make us give us weird looks and say I fucked it up. When she's not here, we really find our stride. And by stride, I mean our 50-minute episodes. Um, Yang Ya is fucking delicious. It's the new concept from the team at Savory Vietnam. It's a little bit more upscale. Entrees are about 19 to $25, but they have like the platters of egg rolls with the blistered skin that you turn into lettuce wraps with bean sprouts, rice noodle, vermicelli noodle, vermicelli noodles, and then like the mint that you start with a little appetizer. They bring you a big fucking bowl of that sweet sauce, you know, with little flakes rolling through. It's got a little tang to it. That was a nice little starter. Grab some veggie ra- uh, spring rolls to compare with. I went with the cubed steak. And I think people may remember me sucking the dick of the uh, what we call the French steak from Happy Cafe on Federal. This is in that same vein. It's really sweet in flavor. It's cooked beautifully. It's almost like filet chopped into bite-sized pieces served over a bed of everything. It's just delicious. And it, so it comes with the noodles, the you know, all the little accoutrements that come with it, the herbaceous, you know, veggies and things of that nature. All of the kit and caboodle, it was fucking good. Like, I want to go back out there this week to get this cubed beef again. It's that delicious. So is it, is it a lunch and dinner spot or just dinner? No, it's open at any time. So they're open at 11. The crowd was predominantly older than I was. I was sitting in the corner, a mixed bag of people that look like us and people that probably know how to say the proper verbiage on the menu. But I was easily the youngest one and people were just going to town. There was at least, I'd say 75% of the tables full, but it's under, it's justifiably so like whether you're just driving by for looking for some great lunch on your way to a university hospital or children's or what have you, the businesses out there, Stop and eat at this place. It's fucking good. It's it's really solid. They may have had sandwiches. It's a lot of bowls and broths. Um, for those that may kind of forget this, in the warmer months, I get you don't want to drink a bowl of hot broth, but that's exactly when you're supposed to because what it does is it cools the inside of your body off. The temperature's cool your body off. So if you find yourself sweating or you come in hot and it's been hot outside, get a big bowl of pho or, you know, their brothy bowls of dank ass meats and vegetables and nudes. Like, and it comes with all of the goodies. Um, you can't go wrong no matter what you order. I obviously went drier with the, uh, the egg rolls, spring rolls and the, the cube steak, but at the same time, like there's broth bowls at the table next to me that are the size of like a commode. They're that big, but it'll cool your body down if you're if you're running hot, just like an engine. Just tap it off. Go get yourself some oil. It is quality, and it's probably about twenty five an entree. Um, and then they have family platters as well. So if you want to go in there, uh, the the vibe inside. They have a private parking lot outside. Um, in the back, so you don't have to deal with the riffraff of, Co- of Colfax if you don't want to. I personally like to hang out with the people of Colfax. That's where you find some of the funniest. But at the same time, if you're doing a little date night, you can park in the back. It's very private. And the inside decor is a, a little bit kind of like fancier, but not like too fancy. Like you can wear t-shirt, collared shirt, whatever you want, but the, the food itself slaps. So in this week's Is It Good or Just New, Chris, it's certified good. That's awesome. I love that. And like, because obviously mine was certified. But that happens. Just, yeah. And it's good to have that. It's good as well. Exactly. And, you know, they're, it's hit and miss, but I feel like maybe they knew what they were doing. Obviously, they, they have a, a restaurant that was a staple in the community for 20 years. They've decided to change it up to kind of appeal to the newer, you know, chic concepts that are around and i feel like they're doing their job really well so i i'm certifying good on the the yang ya 
or Don Da, D-A-N space D-A, and you can find it in Aurora on Colfax Avenue. Um, in addition to things that are new, this one does not qualify under the is it good or just new because it's a pop-up but we need to talk about the stuzy pop-up stuzy is shorthand for stuccini which means small casual bites in italian um chef cheyenne from Jacques, which we were just talking about, Brixton. Chef Cheyenne has a expertise. She used to work under at Tavernetta as well, which is where she actually befriended Troy Bowen, who went, we guessed through the pod, owner of Noble Riot. They teamed up to do a wine pairing, small bite dining experience last week. Um, another one of those situations where I just wanted to kind of go eat and just kind of turn my you know, head off and stop thinking about shit. I ended up sitting next to a group of hilarious, like there's four or five guys that were talking about owning a winery and like kind of pushing back a little bit on Troy's recommendation. They're like, so is this grape from here? And he was like, no, it's from there. And like they had like a sophisticated conversation about it. And the other half was the team from Jacques there to support their homies. This was a fun fucking experience. So you come out the gates with like an arancini. Obviously, everyone knows what that is. Just a fried rice bowl that absolutely fucking slapped. It was stuffed with um, cheese and then had a little sauce underneath. Just a great little playful dish. But one thing that this was my favorite bite was the next one. It was like a chickpea cake that was blended with squid ink. So it came out black. But the outside kind of had a little bit of the crispiness of almost not like a full fritter, but almost like a turnip cake texture. And it was Chef uh, Cheyenne and Chef Anna Munoz, but they they dyed it black with the squid ink, brought a little bit of that flavor profile, and then hit it with this garlic aioli, like almost like a sour cream almost. Like it had a little thicker consistency, topped with a little trout roe on top. I could have had 700 of these little cubes. They looked like a brownie, a savory brownie. It was so fucking good. Holy fucking balls. It was delicious. Yeah. And so obviously the Jacques fam was, they were a hoot and a holler. We were watching basketball on my phone and they just kept churning out snacks, just churned them out. I think one of the courses was, it said prawn and I was like, okay, good. Only one prawn because I've been eating like 78 snacks in the last half hour. No, three big fucking prawns just hammering. I was like, oh yeah, okay. With the heads on, they were gorgeous. I mean, cooked beautifully. Just served like that with a little uh, like a like a red like a tapenade almost like kind of sauce like a, almost like a texturized tapenade over the top so you can kind of pull the head off and then you use the body and you whip it around in that red sauce and then you just finger bang it into your mouth. Yeah, they were not Lagostines, but they were really fucking solid. But there was also some really playful dishes in the, in there as well. They did a, like a spring. You were just talking about the burrata from uh, Brixton and how it kind of mixes and matches. She did a, are they, uh, excuse me, Chef Cheyenne and Chef Anna. They had this uh, snap pea, English pea, pea shoot salad. That was just delightful with a little rice cracker on top. I used it as a shovel to get it all in my gullet because I'm a fat piece of shit on the inside. But it was delightful. And then they did a fancy uh, grilled cheese with like more to shave thin mortadella. Chris, it was awesome. And my, I took pictures. They did not necessarily photo well. So I'll try and get some pictures up there as we start talking more about this. But if you see Stuzy. Anywhere on your Instagram feed, it's S-T-U-Z-Z-I. You can find them, do the Google, um, and we'll be sure to post about them on social as well. Grab tickets because it's it's approachably priced. They do it with wine pairings, so you get like seven glasses of wine, five or six fun bites, and I was sitting there gripping and ripping the vape pen like high as bejesus at the table just knocking back like fucking grilled cheeses and prawns. It was a blast, and I needed it. Oh yeah. I think he has a good idea of like what people if you give him a couple descriptions, I think he can 
and set you on the right path. Um, and also, people should be making more fancier grilled cheeses. I think those need to become a thing because I love a goddamn grilled cheese. And when you start putting like really nice cheese on it and you add it a couple other things, those things can be memorable. Chris, I couldn't agree more. Uh, it really is just bangers on bangers on bangers in that regard. Like, you get a nice piece of bread and you get a good cheese. Anything can dance in that fucking dance. You can put pecan in there. You can just put bacon. You, you can put a tomato in there if you. Oh, dude, there's so many variants. And then this one that it was just like gooey in the middle and then shaved par- like Parmesan on top. It fucked so hard. Like it was exactly what Shane Gillis's uncle wishes he had at late night meals because it was it was elevated, but by God, was it so good. Like, if they did a pop-up at the farmer's market, they could just sell those cheeses. Oh, Jesus Christ is all I got to say. Um, but that pretty much wraps up my Memorial Day. I'm sore as fuck. Um, we're one week removed from uh, losing Jerry. Last week, I just didn't really have it in me, but, you know, we had we posted something about it to let our community know, let our friends know. Like, Jerry was an institution you know he was our roommate chris you and i when we lived together when you joined the podcast um people told stories about it sent us text messages there were times where jerry was allowed to eat whatever he wanted and if someone told him not to eat on the table we would yell at that person not jerry jerry got got us paid on occasion jerry did a couple different ads shout out to the fido gummies for hip and joint support um, where were y'all in year 13 assholes? Um, but realistically, he also helped us promote the healthcare exchange for, uh, for connect for health Colorado because he was a gorgeous dog. He was well behaved and he was my best friend for 13 years. Um, he's missed dearly every day. Um, we still have two wonderful pups at home. Elf, a.k.a. Grandma, is 100% a foster fail because there is no way in hell I would give anybody one of my dogs after losing a dog. So we're going to go ahead and adopt her and then foster a new dog this autumn once everything settles in our calendar. But we just miss Jerry to bits. And, I mean, there's just 12 years of him barking at the mailman you know loving strong like his greeting was always to just go take his nose and shove it into people's crotch oh yeah he didn't he didn't scare and she would be like excuse me and be like sorry they get it from their father <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, don't blame me. This is before the Me Too movement, and so he was allowed to do that. But at the same time, he was a good old boy. Um, he absolutely loved the the shit out of Snickerdoodle cookies and pepperoni pizzas. I mean, he would have eaten any. He ate everything. He was just like his father. Um, and on his last day, we hired a company called Caring Pathways to come in home and do the services to, you know, put him out of pain. And in the last week, his body kind of just shut down, like his claws were clenched, so he wouldn't walk. It would kind of be like he would be trying to walk on his knuckles. So I was picking him up and taking him out to go to the restroom, and then he stopped eating and drinking. And so we want, you know, obviously you'd love to say, oh, he passed peacefully, but that's not what happens with dogs. Like oftentimes, if you do it for selfish reasons of you don't want to lose them or let them go, or you don't want to go through the financial because it is a burden, but you know, like waiting on him to starve himself to death or have some con- cognitive, you know, congenitive heart failure, which may have been it, would have just been too miserable. And the people from Caring Pathways were just unbelievably warm. Um, one piece of advice I will do. Uh, recommend if you have a senior dog and you're looking at options, Caring Pathways is wonderful. Um, it is more expensive to do it on the weekends, but when time comes, time comes. Also, my one tip is do it in the morning because I did it in the afternoon and it was the saddest Sunday of my entire life. Like I'm about to cry right now, but I've been crying for a fucking month, so it doesn't really matter. But they were like, they, they tell you a window when they come in. And if they're not at the beginning of that window, then it feels like you're waiting on the Grim Reaper to pull up. Like, 
I'd almost rather them be punctual because then I'm just like sitting there waiting, like crying and he's in my lap and I'm just petting him and we're just waiting, you know, we're just waiting and it's rough. But, um, I want to give a shout out to the people at Perry's pizza, which is going to be random as fuck. Um, we obviously had the Wilsons in town while this was going on. So that was butt fucking awkward. They left for the day and went and did their own thing while we had to go through this. But Perry's pizza, we ordered food to have at the house and I ordered a pizza for Jerry and I told him my dog loves pepperoni pizza and this was his last meal and so they took the 14 inch and made it an 18 inch pizza and loaded it with uh, pepperonis so I go home and I just chop it up into small pieces and Jerry ate like four fucking slices of pepperoni pizza he had like three snickerdoodles we gave oh fuck city vet they wouldn't give him pain medication so we had to get some from a friend who has an older dog to just help Jerry you know get through sleeping at night so fuck city vet but you know we put in some medication for him so he wasn't at pain so he was just present barely but he couldn't pick his head up or anything like that um we're gonna miss jerry to absolute bits there's videos of him remember when we had nicholas babin on the podcast our frog the french buddy who came over with wine to talk about tech and wine and he came to the apartment and jerry just wouldn't leave him alone so he was like hugging on jerry the whole episode I tried to post a video m- memorial for Jerry and Instagram cut it off halfway through. So like half my photos didn't get to upload. And I, it's not like I'm going to like, you know, wa- well, you know, Walter around, whatever the word I'm looking for is dwell on it. But I just look at those videos on my own and he's in some of them of Jerry just like all up in his business while he's trying to record. And here's this French guy just hanging out in our apartment who brought over a bunch of his wine from his vineyard to our apartment in uptown Colorado. And our dog is just fucking molesting him. (laughs) And it just, it was so funny. And he was just a funny dog and a sweet boy. And I think everybody that ever got to meet him would have said the same. And so about a week after, I feel a little bit more comfortable talking about it, but easily the worst day of my absolute life. And no offense to my grandparents who passed. Um, If my dad or my mom are listening to this, I loved our grandparents. But this was my first dog to have as like my own. And I've from 20 three years old or 24 years old I had this dog we moved three states together um we had gone camping he played with bears in Yellowstone you know shout out to Eve which is our final subject of the day presented by our friends at Pine Melon but I just wanted to give a proper ode to my dog who I just miss to pieces and uh the next dog because we will adopt elf aka grandma that deaf bitch she can't hear shit she's thick as a bale of cotton she loves everything she loves people she loves naps she loves to eat she fits in like a glove she loved jerry as well and she was so sweet when he was like they were like hey let the dogs kind of like familiarize themselves after he passes like we had a little time with just us and him and the elf was like laying on us because she could see us upset and it was she's just so sweet so i'm gonna adopt that girl um but i'm gonna also we're gonna start fostering but i want to foster a wiry haired dog a little dog that i can like put my lap like my Oh, yeah. And not like one of those loser backpacks that has like the space bubble for a cat. I want one like the Corgi, the famous one, where it can stick its head over like a mirror cat can just pop out and be like, did somebody say treats? That's my next dog to foster. Oh, yeah. And Elf, I would do that, but she's a big girl and her legs aren't too great. She's uh, she's an older pup, but at the same time, we'll get back into the, the foster game this fall Um, once our heart fully mends, but... It was a great 13 and a half years and a really shitty eight days. So (sighs) rest in peace, Jerry Bear. On our last segment of the day, it's called Is Eve Dead or Will She Check In? And realistically, we have asked her to check in and she has been very vigilant and letting us know when she's made it places. I'm glad she made the drive up safely. She has checked in from the Tetons and she is headed into Yellowstone 
there's a viral video going around asking women, Chris, if they would rather be stranded in the woods with a bear or a man, and the women are choosing the bear. And a lot of that is due to the fact that men are fucking gross pigs, like gross people in general. Like, all in all, you're not too bad. And I like to think that I'm not too bad. Um, but I see why they choose that rationale because they don't even feel safe sometimes in the same home as men. And this isn't another PSA as we've done our one of the month, but this is our segment called is Eve alive presented by pine melon. Use promo code stoned when shopping at home. So you don't have to chance it dealing with bears or men. You can do all your grocery shopping from the confines of your house. And the first $50 is on us. Just type in promo code stoned they'll deliver that fucking grocery order right to your house say two hours brother it doesn't matter but that's where our segment of the day is wishing eve well in case she's listening to this pod while she's doing her hiking or something she did have a nail in the tire i know Yeah, you know, uh, our friend Will once said you'd rather be attacked by a tiger than a bear because a tiger will just maul your face off and kill you right then. A bear will eat you asshole first, so you're alive through a lot of the process. Yeah, so it's going to be – it would it would suck. But I saw a litany of bears, and I told her if she would buy the bear mace but doesn't use it, she can return it to Walmart after because it's like 50 fucking bucks. But at the same time, she can also use that on predators like man, zebras, giraffes. You never know what you're going to – Yeah. COVID, anything, it can, it'll stay, it'll keep everything away from you. Bear mace. I recommended it, but we hope Eve has a great time. And we know that she's definitely not listening to this because she doesn't give a shit, but we wish her well. That's true. That's what happens with bear attacks. In the words of Dwight Schrute, I stayed for the whole movie because bear attacks happen when you least expect it. Um, so we're sending her, her our well wishes. I know she'd be pissed that this episode went 50 minutes, but such is life. Oh, yeah, it's probably shit. But at the same time, we have a kick-ass episode this Thursday. We sit down with the hoagie champion himself. A.J. Scheffler talking about Little Arthur's Hoagies and Artie's Express finding their new home right here in Sunnyside slash right next to La Raza Park at Die Bolt Brewing. It's going to be exciting. Prices are dropping, which I know will tickle the pickle of a lot of people in this community. So go check out A.J.'s new spot and be on the lookout for a new episode this Thursday. We'll be back on schedule. Until next episode, y'all stay high, stay hungry. Oh, yeah, get your Drink Red, Wear Red tickets. You can get them, just Google it. They're $70, and if you use promo code STONE for that, you get 10% off. It's going to be a fucking party on Thursday. I don't know what I'm wearing, but it's going to be a party. Until next week, cheers. Cheers.